How's it going everybody? I'm Driftwood and welcome back to Learning GMS2. In this episode we're going to use Beatbox.co to create some simple retro background music for your game. So in an attempt to make everything ourselves we're going to make some very easy uh, very easy to make uh, background music using Beatbox.co and this is a really cool website I'll put a link in the description below um, but basically you can when you go here you set your let's just go over everything because it's a little confusing at first but it's really easy to use once you give it a few minutes of learning so this is your master volume here and you can hit play or spacebar to play your music this is going to give you um, like you show you your shortcut commands you know you can use Z to undo your last action Y to redo you can press C to copy V to paste you don't have to hold down alt or control or uh, or uh, command on a Mac you don't have to do any of that you can just press the button when you're inside the tile there um, preference you can show the piano on the left hand side it'll show the notes um, I recommend doing that so you can see where your your root note is <clears throat> um, you can also uh, highlight the fifth notes you see how we've got like a string of blue and a string of uh, like a lighter tan color here uh, these these beams are showing you your, your root notes and your fifth notes If you don't know anything about music don't worry um, there's a scale that makes it easy to not m make bad songs right so um, moving on to the next thing we're gonna come back to export at the end so I recommend starting with easy smiley face and that's going to let you pick a key and it's going to show you only notes that are going to go together, right? So you have your, fir your, your first, your third, which is your major third, and your perfect fifth. And then it's going to show you the next octave. So basically just three notes, uh, and then it'll go up. Um, and uh, so you got your first, th your third, your fifth, and then you're going to continue on up the scale. Um, so you have five notes in the scale. It's a five-note scale, F-sharp to F-sharp. And it's only showing you notes that are going to work together. Um, so I recommend starting with C if any of you have played piano it's all the white notes on the piano um, so really really easy um, you can set the tempo right here how fast you want the tempo to go you can set to triples or standard I recommend going to triples because then you can add the you know you can have like that um, three notes in one beat type thing because you got your quarter notes which is one two three or you got your uh, eighth notes is one and two and three and four and you've got your triplets that go triplet triplet three and four yeah so I usually go one triplet two triplet three triplet four triplet it doesn't do uh, I don't think it does oh it will no it won't do sixteenth notes so you can't go one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a but it will give you the da 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 so um, I recommend setting the rhythm to triplets just to give you that extra bit of uh, uh, thing the the volume uh, you can control each instrument so you have four instruments basically you've got four to go across and each instrument has its own volume settings they're pretty balanced but you can maybe the bass is too loud and uh, you want to drop the bass <laughs> uh, I'm terrible okay after that you can select how do you want the instrument to be sequenced you can select uh, what kind of wave do you want it to be this will change how it basically sounds uh, and you can change the envelope, you can change the filter, the chorus and effect to give it uh, a little bit of a different sound each time. So I put together a song that I'm going to give to you. Um, I'm going to give you the link, the exact link to this one. And it'll actually, when you load it up, it'll use all the settings that I've made for this song. It, you could put it into your game. Um, I recommend you, you mess around and try to make your own. But just to get started and learn, if you're just learning to put it in GML, um, I'm going to give you this one that I made. So I've been working on this for a little while. Um, very, very simple thing. I'm going to play it for you real quick. Oh, my God. Um, let's bring the volume down a little bit. Sorry about that. Killing your ears. Okay. So we've got four sequences here. And you can see we're, we're going across. This is the first thing. This is the second one, the third one, and this is your drums. So this is like your drums, your bass. This is like uh, like your middle of the piano. This is like the higher part of your piano. You have the second pattern. You can use the up and down keys to change the patterns. Um, if you wanted to take a pattern and copy it, you just highlight that cell, press C, and then um, go to another one and move the pattern up to like a three or four where it's blank and press V and it'll copy the settings from two to, to four. And after that, it'll just loop. 
and you could use spacebar to start and stop that. Hopefully the volume was okay on that. Um, so anyway, yeah, you just kind of sequence the patterns. Uh, I've got a pattern, the first pattern for the first four bars. I've got a second pattern for the uh, second four bars. Then I've got a third pattern for the third four bars, but then I'm using the second pattern again on the fourth four bars. There's also one last thing to cover um, before we export is this little thing right here. Maybe you're just working on this one t pattern and you want to just loop this one. You can just drag this little purple thing and it'll just loop that one over. So say you just want to work on this this one right here and get that one right and you don't want it to jump around. Um, as soon as it finishes playing that, it'll jump to here. Boom. So now it's just going to loop the second patterns. And when you're done with that, you can say, okay, let's work on the third pattern. We'll go over here. It'll finish playing that and then jump to the third pattern. And then when you're finally done, you just bring it all the way out. And you can bookmark the, the, the settings because every time you change a setting, it's going to memorize in the description of the URL, which is really cool. So if you make a setting, you can copy the URL and share it with people and they can hear what you made without having to download anything. So I think that's really awesome. Uh, so finally, we got our sequence of song uh, and we got it down to the right. Uh, I'm going to raise the volume up and I'm going to export it. So then you're just going to name your song. We'll call this Space Driftwood theme one and then you set how many loops you want I think you could have four yeah you can set it to loop four times and then you want to export it as a dot wave file so we'll go ahead and export that as a wave file click it once and then wait because it's got to do some background processing to convert all of this analog signal into a digital uh, wave file so it seems like it's frozen but just give it a second you'll see it'll start downloading once that's downloaded you can right click it show it in your folder you can uh, cut that and then paste it to wherever you want to put it. I'm putting it, all my stuff, like I said, in the Game Maker Studio. Uh, I said this in a previous one. You want to create, like, here's where all your projects are. Right, but right before all your projects, create a temporary, or not a temporary folder, but create, a, like, your own custom resources folder. Make a, all these manually, and I made a music one. And we'll just paste that in there just like that. So it, the file sizes aren't that long, you know, when you record a WAV file, usually uh, for a song this long, the WAV file would be like 100 megabytes at least, uh, if you do it in Audacity with a high bit rate. Um, but it's only like 17, 18, like around 20, uh, and if you don't loop it, it's even smaller. So the, it's a, actually a small file size too. You can also get online converters to convert those to like .mp3 to even compress them down to like one or two megabytes. So you can really can uh, compress this data down. You could also export as a MIDI file if you want to play MIDI files, but I'm not sure how that works in uh, Game Maker Studio 2. I've never tried to play MIDI files, but you might as well try to do Wave. Once we've done that, we'll jump back into Game Maker Studio 2. We're going to go to Sounds and we'll click on Create, and then we'll call it uh, S and D underscore Main Theme. Um, that'll work fine. Main theme, and then we'll select the file that we want. We'll go back. Here's all of our projects. Here's our imported resources. Here's our music, and we'll select our our space drift with theme one. Okay, boom. So we've got that. We'll bring the volume down to about 50%, just in case. We'll set it to stereo, quality 16 bit, sample rate 4800, bit rate, whatever your audio card is. Uh, if you're not sure, leave it at 128. You can select the audio group that it's in, but you don't need to actually create another audio group. You can just keep it in audio group default. Uh, sample rate, um, I recommend jumping into 4800 uh, hertz, but it's up to you. Um, or kilohertz, I think. And then, okay, so that's it for creating the file. So now we can jump into, uh, like, that persistent object, what we made in another game. <clears throat> we'll actually put it on uh, right here inside of our... Um, our main game. So we can create a new object to play that. Uh, I already have all of the, the sound effects on the step uh, create right here. We went over that in this. I actually haven't posted it, but I will post that before this uh, on how to do all of this. So basically all we're going to do is do the same thing we did right here. Audio sound pitch, audio sound gain, audio sound, uh, audio play sound. So we can copy the code that we're using for when we fire our lasers, but we're going to change this from false to true and we're going to change the sound we're actually playing. So let's create a new object We'll go ahead and put this under our, uh, oh, one other thing I didn't show in a tutorial. Um, you can right click and create a folder by going uh, add group. And we'll go ahead and do that and we'll say 
this will be for audio. We'll make a group. So now this is under objects, but we're creating a new folder of objects. Uh, in, we've got one for weapons, one for our controller events, which technically this would be a controller event that we're going to create, but we'll just make it for audio. And then we've got one for animations, one for objects. You can subcategorize your objects and your, you can do the same thing for your sprites. Once you get a lot of them, maybe you want to organize them a little bit better. So you can right click and uh, add a group to kind of separate them a little bit better. So now let's drag this new object that I already created and didn't use yet to uh, audio. And we'll go ahead and double click on that. And we're going to call this obj underscore uh, play music whatever you want to call it. It doesn't need a sprite, doesn't even need to be visible. Um, you probably don't want it to be persistent because if you switch to another stage you, you might want it to change. But you could actually control all of it uh, and have it persistent. But for now we're not going to check persistent. We're just going to add um, a create because remember we don't want to run this every step. We only want to run this when it's when it first starts up. So as soon as this object is created what do we want to do? Well we're going to do uh, we're going to set the pitch, uh, which we actually don't need to do. This is more for sound effects, so we'll audio. We'll just comment that out, and you can change the pitch of the the whole f song just right there. So maybe you you kind of recorded it all, but you wanted it to be a little bit higher frequency. You could just change the pitch of the whole track instantly by doing a uh, sound pitch. But I'm going to keep the audio uh, pitched how I already made it, and let's change it to the sound we created. S and D underscore. Uh, what did I call it? Main theme. Main theme. You could even call it MUS if you want to use. Uh, you want to separate your music tracks from your sound uh, sound effects. Let's actually do that. Let's go ahead and change this to MUS for music. Boom, boom, boom. MUS underscore main theme. You see that it's it's turned to a white color instead of uh, a different color because it doesn't recognize it. So what we're going to do is rename this with F2 or right click and rename and we're going to t uh, replace the naming convention for our actual music tracks to MUS. So instead of uh, S and D this is MUS main theme. So these are the sound effects, that's our music track. So what we're going to do is change the parameters. We'll actually make the volume on this. Let's just say 2.5. It might be too loud but we'll adjust it. So uh, once again audio sound gain. We're selecting the index, the name that we're, uh, the file we want to play, the volume uh, or the gain and then uh, when do you want it to, to like get to that volume. We want it to be instantly or actually let's go ahead and change this to like 30. So um, well that'll take this uh, and then and then uh, go to that volume. It might Let's just set it to play instantly. You can play around with this number a little bit to get it to zoom in and fade in and fade out how you want um, by setting the main volume on this on this object to like maybe uh, 0 0.01 and then set this to like 60 frames and then this to like 0.5 so that it starts super quiet and then after a second it gets to full volume. So you can create a like a, a fade in effect just like that. Uh, th then we're going to um, check the priority. Do we ever want the music to cut out because of, <clears throat> excuse me, because of too many sound effects? Absolutely not. So we want to set the priority on this to be higher than our sound effects. You never want to have the, the background music cut out because of sound effects. You want to have the sound effects cut out and you still have your background music. So we're going to set the priority higher on our music track than we have on our um, sound effects. We also probably want to loop it, so we'll set this boolean at the end to true instead of false. So at the beginning, it's going to set the volume of this track, and then it's going to play this track with a high priority, and it's going to loop that track. So now all we have to do is go to our room. So let's go ahead and go to room main, and we're going to drag and drop our object play music in there. It doesn't really matter. It's not visible. As long as it's on the map, it's going to work. So let's save the game. Hopefully the volume is not too loud. I might close it and reopen it if it's not right. 0.25 is where it should be set. Ah, that's probably about right. So now we're flying around. Um, I also did health bars, but I will do that in a, the next tutorial. So we added health bars, but we're going to do that in the very next tutorial, guys. So we've got our music. Our little, uh, I also added more um, effects when you shoot the ship, you see he's got a dust particle on him. And I basically don't, you don't need a tutorial for that because I've already gave you the tutorial on how to draw those, right? So just put them where you want to draw and you can, so when you kill them, they, they do another animation. When you shoot them, they do a little tiny dust animation. And when they die, they do a little bit of a bigger animation. Also, we're going to let them run into us. You see that they also turn into dust when they, 
you know, they, you know, there's a little animation that plays when they die. But we got our music. Uh, we're gonna do health bars next, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have enjoyed these GMS2 Learning Game Maker Studio 2 tutorials, please consider giving that uh, this video a like and subscribe to the channel if you're new here. I have lots of uh, RPG Maker tutorials and I plan to make a whole lot more Game Maker Studio 2 tutorials. So thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate each and every every one of you. Um, I'm interested to see. I'm interested to see what you guys come up with. Um, yeah, you guys are awesome. We'll see you guys in the next video. Starting to come together.